Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode and today I'm going to show you some of the nicest and often some of the cheapest vintage lenses you can buy. So if you're a digital mirrorless shooter and you're looking for some really high quality, really affordable vintage glass, check out this video. And if you found a real bargain lens of any kind, M42, L39 or any other description, let me know in the comments box below what you found and how much you got it for. Share your bargains with us in the comments box, please. So the screw mount lenses are so cool because they mount to the camera with a screw thread. There's a screw thread on the back of the lens and there's a screw thread on the lens mount. Let me show you. So it just screws off. Oops, and there on the back is the screw thread. I don't know if you can see that just on the back here, just on the mount where the lens mounts. And inside here, there's another screw as well. And so they just screw together like this. Nice and simple. Now, there are two main types of screw mount lens. One is the M42 mount, and that's an SLR or single lens reflex mount. And M42 lenses, which are used on SLR cameras like this, cannot be used on rangefinder cameras like this. L39 lenses, however, can be used on rangefinder cameras, but can't be used on SLR cameras like this one. However, you can shoot them both on digital mirrorless cameras, which is really good news for any mirrorless shooters. Right, we've got a plethora, a multitude, an embarrassment of lenses to show you today. So I'm going to go reasonably quickly through each one because we have got quite a lot to get through. So we'll start with the Pentax lenses and that seems appropriate because they invented the mount in the mid 60s sometime. I think it was the mid 60s, do correct me if I'm wrong. These lenses have a very, very high quality of manufacture. In fact, some people say that these are the finest lenses ever made and handling them you know, I'm not too surprised that that claim is made because they're just beautiful. Let me just show you. Just look at how nicely that lens is made. It's got a beautiful black anodized finish on it. It's a very tough finish. The focus ring turns really, really smoothly, just like butter. And there's no play or slop in any of that. It's absolutely uh, tolerances are, are absolutely spot on with this lens. These ones will make some fantastic images. I've used these so much I can't tell you. They're just fantastic lenses and I come back to them again and again and again. Many of them can be found quite cheaply if you're patient and persistent. Those are the two great skills that will enable you to find cheap lenses, but they're not going to be found cheaply if you buy the first one you see. That won't get you the cheapies. You've got to really exercise some patience and persistence for those. My first Pentax lens was the 50mm f1.4. And that's a really nice lens, absolutely beautiful color pentax lenses give a a sort of a pastel pastely color palette they're just a little bit more restrained than for example uh, an olympus zuiko lens might be the 1.4 gives very beautiful background blur it gives lots and lots of bubbles from point light sources and it's a very celebrated and very sought after lens. Mine was a bit yellow actually because the 1.4 is radioactive, it's got thorium in its elements and it will yellow over time 
Um, you can clear that with a UV torch. If you put UV light through it for a few days, I believe that will clear the yellowing. But what I did, I just adjusted the white balance to compensate. I was, I have to admit, a little bit disappointed with the sharpness from that lens. It's softer than the Zuiko 1.4, wide open, so, you know, it wasn't quite as sharp as some of the 1.4s, but it does have lovely blur and unique colour. Um, like most 50mm f1.4s, the Pentax will sell for around about £80 or thereabouts on auction and that's the real value of that lens that's generally the ballpark figure for what they sell for again avoid you know inflated buy it now prices these go for around £80 right I've got over here the 50mm f1.8 from Pentax and this is the Super Takuma version uh, actually, this is an f2, 55 millimeter f2. This is there was also a 55 f1.8, and that's the lens I was thinking of. They're actually the same lens. If you see the Pentax 55 f2 or the Pentax 55 f1.8, they are the same lens, but the 1.8 just opens that tiny bit further well now i'll tell you something about this lens i actually prefer it to the 1.4 it's a lot cheaper it's about half the price and it's sharper wide open it, it really is a very sharp lens and you can shoot it wide open all day long plus there are, there's no thorium in this lens so if you're not keen on thoriated lenses this might be the one to go for and it really is just as well made it's got that fantastic pentax build quality and it's a little smaller too well now you might think oh gosh a 1.8 or f2 is no use to me i really want f1.4 to be to be able to open up that bit wider well now i don't think it really matters this one makes really nice images it was the kit lens with new pentax cameras very often and really when it comes to it that tiny little bit more um, aperture opening that f1.4 gives you over f2 or f1.8 isn't going to make that much more blur the results are not going to be that different so i reckon the 1.8 or f2 is a real bargain it's one of the nicest vintage lenses you can buy and it will cost you between 30 to 40 pounds and uh, if i were you if you want a nice cheap 50 grab one of these you really won't go far wrong right what else have i got to show you i do have another pentax somewhere here it is this is the pentax 50 mil f4 macro or well half macro actually because it's got a magnification not of one to one which is true macro but one to two so it's sort of half uh you know not not quite the full magnification but just half it's slow at f4 but it's really really sharp i think this is the sharpest vintage lens i've used and it was known for a time as the sharpest lens in the world in its day so i've heard i don't know if it actually was the sharpest lens in the world but to be even considered for that title you know you've got to be pretty sharp this is a very very sharp lens it's brilliant for close-ups I know it's not true macro, but you know what? I don't care. It makes wonderful close-up shots. It's great for photographing anything very small, for looking at flowers, for doing eBay stuff or anything like that. It's great for digitizing negatives, which, um, you know, if you digitize with um, a digital camera and a lens like this, you're going to get very high res very nice images of your negatives it's not just a macro lens either it's pretty good for general photography it's a bit slow 
you don't get much background blur from it unless you're pretty close to your subject but again who cares it's a versatile well-made very sharp lens that's good for close-ups and general photography too it'll cost you about a hundred pounds or maybe 150 pounds if you buy the first one you see or 50 to 60 pounds with patience a great lens so the pentax lenses are some of the finest lenses in the world several of them are cheap and they've got m42 screw mounts so you can use them on any m42 slr or your digital mirrorless right let's have a look at some ltm that is like a thread mount or l39 screw mount lenses and i'm going to begin with one of my favorites and it's this one it's the jupiter 8 this is a copy a direct copy of the 1930s zeiss sonar so it's a very very nice lens indeed there were lots of versions available this one is uh, from I think the mid 60s sometime and it's got the focus ring here it's the one where the whole of the front turns let me just show you quickly so the whole of the front turns with that lens as you turn the focus ring the aperture ring is stepless on these so they're good for anybody who wants to shoot video it's an f2 lens so it's got a nice fast aperture there are other designs um, this one here on the Zorki 3 has a focusing tab that's another silver one that's a fairly early design and there's also this shape in a black body and that's by far the most common um, so there are lots and lots of versions but they are all optically the same I've tested lots and lots of these and I can't see a hair between them they seem identical they've got a beautiful character this really is one of my favorite lenses uh, it, it, contrast is fairly low they're pretty sharp and it's very very small and that's one of the virtues of rangefinder lenses they do tend to be really tiny this one makes very very nice background blur with loads of bubbles from point light sources in the background it has one or two harsh spots but you know i'm going to give it a pass for that because it doesn't have many there's just something likable about the lens and the images it makes now you might hear you might hear um, the story that uh, russian lenses or lenses from the former communist countries have very wide sample variation and you might buy 10 and get one good one in my experience that is a myth it's just not true almost all of them just like any other lens are good um, and you know I can only report my experience they'll cost you around 30 to 40 pounds they're often advertised um, more expensive than that but don't buy them at expensive prices be patient and wait for one at the right price you you can often get one for 30 to 40 pounds with a camera with a, a working Zorky 4 rangefinder so I reckon these are a great bargain a lovely little lens Ju sticking with Jupiter let's look at the Jupiter 9 this is a very accessible and affordable 85 millimeter lens uh, it's an f2 I think is it yes it's an f2 um, so it's not particularly fast but it's fast enough and it's small it's a small lens it's not huge like some 85s can be it's also got 15 aperture blades so you get lovely round bokeh lovely round um, bubbles from point light sources uh, with no jagged edges however you stop down it's another Zeiss Sonar copy as I'm uh, as I understand it do correct me if you know better and it's great because it's an affordable 85 mil lens a lot of these longer sort of medium longer lenses are getting very expensive this one isn't it's still very affordable 
It's got low contrast and low saturation wide open. I kind of like that look, actually. If you don't, you can tweak in post. It is a very nice look for portraits. Portraits often benefit from the low contrast look. And I think this lens does a really lovely job of portraits. It's an affordable 85 and you'll find it, again with patience, for between 100 and 120 pounds. Really quite a bargain. The Jupiter 11, gosh, we're doing all the Jupiters today. This is a 135mm f4 lens, and I think you'll agree it is fantastic looking. Look at this. Well, it's not a chrome finish, it's an aluminium finish. It's got an aluminium body and it's it's all polished up all nice. It really is lovely. It's a bit slow, but because it's long. It will make you plenty of blur in most shots that you'll want blur in. And it's very nice, very soft blur as well. I like to use this lens on the street. I think it does really nice street portraits. It's a pretty sharp lens and that sharpness counterpoints the soft blur and throws your subject into sharp relief. So this is a really nice lens, one of the cheaper lenses of the Jupiter range. You will find these from between 30 to 50 pounds, possibly cheaper if you're lucky because these are not sought after lenses and uh, you are likely, I think, to find a cheap one if you are persistent. A great little lens. All right, staying with L39 rangefinder lenses, we've got this little Beauty, this is an uncoated Fed 10 lens from around about the mid 30s. Mid, I think it was made up until about 1940 or thereabouts. It's a collapsible lens, but don't collapse it on your mirrorless camera. I've found that this Fed 10 will safely collapse on the Sony A7 Mark I, but no others will. This is a very short one. That's only my experience. My best advice to you is don't collapse any collapsible lens on any mirrorless camera. Otherwise, the back of the lens will hit your sensor and tears and unfortunate times will result. So be careful. This lens, because it's uncoated, it has a glow in, and uh, it, it, it gives, if there's any light areas in your shot, they'll, they'll kind of glow because there's no coating to stop those reflections bouncing around. And I, I rather like that effect, actually. Um, one word of warning with these early Fed 10 lenses, the uncoated versions, they were not made to a standard lens register. Like the early Leicas, the lenses were matched to specific bodies at the factory. So you can't swap these lenses between L39 bodies. This lens was, was matched to a specific camera in production. I didn't buy the camera with it, so I don't know what film camera it will mount to. And it would need some fettling before it would mount properly to a rangefinder camera. But they do work fine on mirrorless bodies. You might have to adjust your adapter slightly, but you should be fine. This lens is fantastic for black and white. I've used it lots for black and white. It was made for black and white film. That was the only film available during the 1930s, at least, um, you know, on a, on a sort of a mass basis. I love this lens and the glow it makes. It gives a real vintage feel to a shot and a real old school feel to a shot. The cost is around 50 to 70 pounds with patience. That's a lot cheaper than an uncoated Elmar and it will make you pictures that are just as nice. Right, there is a coated version of this lens and it has a standardized lens register. So you can swap the coated version of the Fed 10 between rangefinder bodies with no problem. The coated version is far, far better for colour shots. You won't be surprised to learn. Colour is pretty saturated, actually, with quite a bit of pop. 
It's got the same small collapsible design, exactly the same body. It's just that the glass is coated. Um, it seems sharper than the previous version. It might just be my imagination or it might be the fact that uh, my early uncoated version needs a bit of a clean. But the later version does seem a bit sharper. There's no glow with it. It's a much more modern lens with that coating that it has. And the cost is similar, about 50 to 70 pounds with some patience. Another collapsible we've got here is the Indostar 22. I do love these collapsible lenses. They are they have a very beautiful feel and a very beautiful appearance too. And on top of that, they make really nice images as well. They're a bit slow at f3.5, but how much aperture do you really need? The Indostar 22 is a very sharp lens and it's got really good colour as well. And uh, I've made some really nice images with it. You might think that, you know, f3.5 is a bit limiting. I don't think it is. Back in the day, people used these all the time and made very, very nice images with them. And they were pretty fast for their time. You know, f3.5 in the 1940s, 50s, that was a reasonably fast lens. That was a respectably fast lens. And you may think, well, it's not going to make too much blur, but no, it isn't. But how much blur do you want? These f3.5s, like the Indostar 22, will make enough blur to give you separation, uh, certainly at closer distances. And, you know, for much of photography, maybe for most photography, that's really all the blur you'll need. The Indostar 22 can be found for, gosh, between 60 and 80 pounds thereabouts. I was lucky recently, I bought one on a camera, on a Zorky One camera, for, I think it was, I think it was about 45 pounds. It was somewhere between 40 and 50 pounds. So patience and persistence pay off. And, uh, you know, you can be lucky. Another Indostar here, we've got here, this is the Indostar 50. And this is a 3.5 50 mil. It's also available in collapsible body or oh, this immensely ugly non-collapsible version. I think this must be the ugliest lens I've ever seen. Shall we take a quick look and see how ugly looking it is? Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's a really ugly looking lens. Sorry, little lens. I don't mean to be unkind, but gosh, whoever designed that, well... If they do deserve a medal, it would be a medal for non-aesthetic lens design. So there it is. So it's not a particularly attractive body in this version, but my goodness, it makes some nice images. And this lens is so not sought after that, you know, it's practically free. You can buy one of these in the non-collapsible mount like this. For ten pounds, if you want a collapsible one, that's going to cost you between sixty to eighty pounds, maybe more. But the non-collapsible, which has the same glass, Indostar fifty, can be found for around ten pounds, and actually it has better optics than the certainly than the Fed ten. It's a nicer lens than the Fed ten, and it's said to be a bit sharper than the Indostar twenty two, and. Looking at images from both of them, I can quite believe that. A great little lens and very, very inexpensive too. Right, more M42 lenses. And I can tell you that some of my favourite lenses, probably my favourite vintage lenses of all, are mostly all in M42 mount. Those are the Carl Zeiss Jena lenses. I won't talk too much about them here because I have done... Uh, a special on them recently so we've covered them in some detail but these are my favorite vintage lenses they're incredibly sharp they have beautiful color the 50 mil f 1.8 pancola is my gold standard for 50 mil 1.8s and more generally a gold standard for vintage lenses in general um, it's incredibly sharp. It's got incredible color. It's a beautiful, beautiful lens. 
We've also got the 35mm Carl Zeiss Jena Flectagon. This is one I've used and used and used. This is a fantastic lens. All the Carl Zeiss Jena lenses have a really close minimum focus in distance. The Pancola 50mm has a distance of 30 centimeters or 35, I think it's about 30 centimeters. Um, the Flectagon has a minimum distance of 20 centimeters, so this is a really, really versatile lens. Very, very useful indeed. We've also got a 135mm in the CZJ and Carl Zeiss Jena. Uh, we've got an 85mm f1.8, which is actually very expensive now, so it doesn't really fit into these, but I just mention it as I'm passing. We've got the uh, 20 millimeter flectagons, the very wide lenses, the rectilinear lenses that don't distort any architecture or straight lines, and they're all M42 mount. They do tend to be a little bit more expensive than other vintage lenses, but there's a good reason for that, and that's because they're better. They are simply the best vintage lenses I've tried. Prices, for example, the Pancola, you can find a good one for £150. Similarly with the 35 Flectagon. Um, the 20mm Flectagon F4, £150 to £200. The 135mm F3.5, £40 or thereabouts. So, yeah, they're a bit more expensive, but my gosh, you will know where that money went when you shoot them. These are stunning lenses, the nicest vintage lenses I've ever used, and still relatively affordable. There are also the Helios lenses to consider in M42 mount. There are um, some more lenses from the former uh, communist countries. Here's the Helios 44. This is a very famous lens. This is the 13 blade version. Most are 8 blade versions. Um, KMZ versions tend to be the best. KMZ built versions, in my experience anyway, um, tend to give the nicest images. This is a copy of the Zeiss Biotar from the 1930s and uh, it's, it's a swirler. It's it's the sort of archetypal swirly lens and that's what it's famous for giving swirl to its background blur and if you like that this does it really really well i happen to like it and uh, so i love these helios lenses i found the 13 blade one does give the nicest images but the other lenses the eight blade lenses from kmz aren't far behind others from other manufacturers really not quite as good stick to kmz versions and you won't go too far wrong you'll find one of these lenses for what between 50 and 60 pounds possibly less if you're lucky we should also mention the mighty and somewhat preposterous helios 40 this lens is still available new actually they've started making this lens again it is i think it's an 80 mil an 85mm f1.5. This really is an art lens. It's a very, very heavy lens, so you wouldn't want to carry it around all day. You wouldn't really want to stick it on your camera and, you know, have it hanging off your camera all day, partly because it's heavy, partly because it might damage the mount because it's so heavy. So it's an art lens and a portrait lens, and, and, and it excels at that. If you want an image that is very unusual, with the maximum amount of swirl in the background blur this is the one this is you know nothing swirls quite like this this lens swirls more than you know a washing machine it's very 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 swirly it's really soft wide open but that can be kind of nice for portraits it's pretty sought after and a good copy will cost you about 300 pounds but for speciality use, if you're looking for an art lens, if you're looking for a very special lens like no other for a particular purpose, then the Helios 40 won't let you down. Lots of other manufacturers used the M42 mount. 
loads of them used it and that's not surprising because it's a really good mount chin on and cosina spring to mind as well as various others like this chin on 50 mil f2 this is a really nice little lens it really looks like a pentax lens as well it's got that same black anodized aluminium finish it's not quite as well made. I can feel a little bit of play there, but it's still really nice. Uh, you know, very nicely made. It has a different look to the Pentax lenses, though. It's got much higher saturation and, I don't know, very, very different look. A very nice little lens and really cheap like a lot of the third party lenses this sigma zoom for example is another m42 it's got the thread mount on the back there try to avoid the mamiya seco sx lenses um, unless you've got a special adapter because they have a little pin on the back they're an ordinary m42 lens but they've got a little pin on the back there and you can't use them with the ordinary adapter. Ordinary Mamiya Seco lenses are okay, but avoid the SX ones if, or rather, unless you've got that special adapter. But there are loads and loads of them. You know, um, what else? Pentacon. The Pentacon lenses, those are all M42 mount. Um, they did them in exact amount as well, uh, I, I believe, and also the um, Practica bayonet mount. But there are millions and millions of them in M42 mount, and they're really nice. Like this uh, F1.8 50mm I've got here, the Pentacon Practica 1.8. That's a lovely little lens. It's got nice blur. It's got great colour. It's not the most sharp, 50mm 1.8, but it's pretty sharp. And if you stop it down, my goodness, it gets a lot sharper. The Pentacon lenses are really well worth looking at if you're looking for some nice M42s pretty cheaply. So, as you can see, there are many, many, many thread mount, screw mount, lenses about m42s were made for the slr cameras like this one here and the l39s were made for rangefinder cameras like this old leica here but as i say the good news is they all work on digital mirrorless so there are some lens bargains available there are lots of cheap optics out there and good luck in finding them. So that's it from me for today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, ring the bell before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to support it and help it grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. As ever, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time for some more Xenography.